Welcome to A Kindred Evening. My name is Theodora and you're with me for this lovely interview with the star, director and composer of the film Kindred. Let me introduce you to Bamboo Kenneth, the director of Kindred. Bamboo is an artist, director and illustrator, previously led art director on Electric Skies production Glimpse. Kindred is her directional debut and honestly she is one of the nicest people that I've ever been able to interview. What inspired you for this project? Um, okay, so we, we were approached by our financiers, uh, Story Futures, and they wanted us to create a piece to do with queer culture in the UK, which is a very wide subject. Um, so I was working with Dr. Tooth Murphy, who is an oral historian who focuses on, on queer history in the UK. And they gave me all of these, like dozens of interviews to listen to of stories that happened in the UK anytime between, I don't know, yeah, the past hundred years. <laughs> and then I came across um, Real Sid's um, interview about their journey uh, of adoption. And I was just so captured. First of all, I think it was Real Sid's voice and the way they speak, they're very charismatic and they're very expressive. There's a lot of emotion. But then also the, the, the honesty and the rawness of this story, you know, it's, it's very, it's such a raw story that, that although it's, it's very micro, it, it represents a very macro, on a macro level, a very, a, something that many people are going through. Um, and it's not very uh, explored or at least for, uh, in, in mainstream uh, media. And, and what I like about it is kind of, it's a very personal, intimate story, but it also, this, this intimate story is, has also curved away for others to go through this, um, this journey towards parenthood. And it's kind of, it's a beautiful way of telling the, how we redefine the meaning of family today it's still evolving you know so that's kind of what inspired me to tell this story that is mm. absolutely fantastic and in general um what's your biggest inspiration to create um i guess just I, what i like is stories like that that are intimate and personal and, and local a, a story of an individual and that, that has a bigger message, a social message. Um, I, I use art as activism, but I, pref I always think that like telling something in, in the micro level with, with, with emotions and with a specific, in, like an individualistic story that encapsulates something bigger is, is one of the beauties of art. So that's kind of what moves me forward um, as an artist or as a director. That's awesome. Um, the next question that I've got for you is um, mainly because I've, I've seen posters for both Kindred and we as well as another another film that you've done previously. Glimpse. That's the one. <laughs> I was wondering, is there a specific reason that you go for that style of um, art in your films, or is it just it is that just one of your signatures? Um, basically, I, as because I come from a background of fine art, so I have all sorts of styles, and the way I choose a style is is what serves the story, the topic, best. What language, what uh, stylistic language, will tell the story in the best way. So, glimpse is a bit different. I was the art director, I wasn't the director, and I think it's 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 a bit more um, pixery in its style. Yeah. While I felt like for this Sid story. It's a very heavy topic and it's a very sensitive topic. So I thought uh, to lighten it up and to make it w welcoming and inviting by using like right palettes of very curvy shapes and also like kind of womb-like world, create this womb-like world that is intimate and it's experienced in VR. So it's, it's almost like this intimate moment between you and the characters, you're alone there. And I wanted to, to create something that is very inviting and not intimidating um, for, for whoever, for, for the audience. Um, I thought about it that like I would never be able to tell this story on like a flat screen on film 
with, with dozens of people watching it together because it's so personal and to, to experience it fully you need this very soft language um, stylistically. Now it's time for Illa, the composer and artist behind Kindred. Honestly, they are absolutely fantastic. And surprisingly, or maybe unsurprisingly, I found some of their music in my music library today. So you'll be hearing plenty of that in the future, I suspect. What was your favourite piece that you've done for this feature? Um, I think it has to be the main theme, um, just because... Um, it has this kind of playfulness to it and it has a dialogue almost between two voices um, which really represents the, the kind of, I guess again the dialogue between intimacy and expanse, you know, um, micro to macro but also between Ollie and Sid. Um, and it only uses voices and it, only, it actually ended up only using my voice. Um, which again just gives it a kind of, um, similar to what Bamboo was saying really, a kind of softness and a, um, a, a, a maybe an otherworldliness which helps invite people in, I think. That was the intention anyway. <laughs> Definitely. I, I had a little bit of a listen to them this morning, uh, to the ones that have been provided, and honestly it's just, it is so soft and it's just so welcoming considering the uh, themes and everything in terms of the story so yeah it's fantastic it's definitely done that <laughs> thank you uh, no problem um the next one is um a bit of a wild card because i'm just curious if you could compose for a specific tv show film or video game which one would you do and why oh my god um oh gosh i don't know who i mean you know, I'm always drawn to stories that are like this one, that are about people who are seldom heard in in public discourse, in society, on screen, you know, and, and that's why I was so drawn to this. So I think my answer is perhaps a little bit evasive, but essentially I feel like I'm drawn to things that, that really centre on voices we don't hear very often. And so in terms of that, I mean, you know, I don't have a specific TV show that I'm like dying to write for. It's more that when that voice is there, I can't help but listen to it. And I want to support those, those voices. That's sort of my leaning as a composer. Right, OK. That, you know what? It's actually <laughs> completely fair. Um, <laughs> as someone who keeps bouncing around radio stations, um, actually settled on this one i completely get it <laughs> um yeah, it's just yeah. you kind of want to be a part of something um that not everybody hears that much about um yes but also that might represent you in some way yeah exactly that exactly that and i think things that allow you the opportunity to create I mean, Bamboo was speaking there about the visual universe, but I, I, you know, I also really agree with that and feel like anywhere where I can create a, a universe in sound um, is, is where I want to be, rather than um, composing music that's sort of very kind of run of the mill or sort of um, things you hear a lot. Um, so I think you know, being able to choose that palette, to choose those musical shapes and um, how they work against a visual and really create a universe, um, that's really my interest. Um, and from there it just seems to expand and it's, it's um, kind of magical to be part of something like that. Undoubtedly, I mean, I think it influences, it can't help but influence it. And I think for a long time I've resisted it at, at points and, you know, sort of thinking of it almost like, um, 
something to push away and prove myself outside of it, you know, oh, I'm more than just a queer person or I don't want to be labelled as a, a queer artist and things like that. But actually, um, over time, I've come to realise that, that that queerness and non-conforming nature um, is really at the root of my identity and therefore um, influences everything I do, whether I, whether I like it or not. So I'm much better off embracing it rather than trying to resist it. Um, and you know, in this music, it's not as if I sat down and, and, and tried to sound um, gender non-conforming in the way that I sang some of those things. It just, that's just how it comes out. It's just, just how I am. Um, and so I may as well lean into that and, um, you know, I just really believe in authenticity and, you know, the, the more effort you put into trying to, to, to not be what you really are, the, the, the more it holds you back really. So it, yeah, there's, a, there's been a great sense with this project of just being, being re of relief, I would say, of being able to really, um, be myself and create music in the way that is extremely natural to me um, and I think because of that the whole the whole thing has felt like it has an authenticity about it <clears throat> that's fantastic and I, I can very much relate um, as I said earlier <laughs> I was on a number of different radio stations this is definitely mm. the one that I've settled on just because I've finally kind of embraced my trans identity and um, just allowed yeah. it to be a part of me and not something that I'm trying to hide anymore because there's no point of trying to hide it because um, it is just a part of who I am. Yeah, absolutely. And finally, time for Kai. Right, um, the next questions that I've got are for Kai. Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, the first question that I've got for you is what was your favourite part about this project? Um, what wasn't my favourite part? <laughs> <laughs> I really just feel very proud of being a part of this entire project. I don't think a lot of... I have this thing about a lot of my work where I don't necessarily always feel super proud of what I've done, but when it came to this project and especially working with Bamboo and Illa, I was very... I felt, I felt very at home and I think that within the story talking about Sid I think it was also just something that touched my heart so closely that it was a project I really couldn't not be a part of and I don't think I could pinpoint a singular favourite moment of it other than really now doing a lot of this PR stuff and being able to really delve in and talk about what we've created together this might be my favourite part <laughs> Right, okay, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> Literally makes perfect sense. Right, so the next question that I've got for you, if you could go back in time and change anything, what would you change? So, as much as I'm a big believer in what happens happens and we have to accept the world for what it is, if I could go back in time, if I could change something, I honestly think that I would stop I would have stopped myself worrying so much about having to be someone or having to be something when I was younger. I think overall we often try to force ourselves into boxes because society tells us that we need to fit into boxes and I wish I had realised a lot sooner that boxes really are not for me. Like, I'm not a box person. Please give me a circle, a triangle, anything other than a box. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Exactly. Um, the another question that I've got for you um, was in regards to your Hollyoaks yeah. um, stent. If that's all right. Yeah, of course. Fantastic. Um, what was the pressure like with being the first non-binary person on Hollyoaks? I think that there was definitely. We can't deny that there's always pressure doing the first of anything. I think and. Honestly, a lot of my time is spent like ignoring the fact that I was like the first to do anything because um, that is an odd thing for me to claim um, personally, but hey, it exists, it's here. But I think the thing that is not necessarily the pressure, I think more I questioned how could I have been the first? And 
that's the thing that really hit me the most throughout starting on Hollyoaks and then kind of continuing my career from Hollyoaks has been how could I have been the first and also how have we only still only gotten the second and no more um I think that the idea of being the first of something you always just want to be a catalyst for more of that thing happening and to know that obviously we then had um, Tylan come out on the show as non-binary um, in the character of Brooke was amazing, but I really just want to continue to see more representation within soap and within just mainstream media in general of non-binary identity, but also trans identity and just the entire gender diversity spectrum. I think that that's something I've always wanted to see and something that I really just want to see people hold up their flag and be like, yeah, you know what, we're going to continue to do the work. Let's not, let's not start and stop with the first person. Yeah, completely agree with that. And the final question that I've got for you is this. Do you have a message for any young intersex or non-binary people listening? Oof. I mean, I have many messages. Whether any of them are wise is questionable, but um, <laughs> I'll give it—I'll give it my best shot. Um, I think the message I probably want to leave with any young non-binary or intersex um, young people listening is: don't be afraid of being being the multitudes that you are. I think that. As a person who has a lot of intersections to their identity, I was often really scared of being everything all at once and thinking that no one would possibly understand or even possibly believe who I am if I was everything at once. But the truth is, it doesn't really matter what those people think because you are all of those multitudes of things. and. That is a beautiful thing, and we should love that about ourselves and not try and hide it. Definitely. That is fantastic. I have to say, ah, uh, fantastic. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I've also got some more of your work, Illa, from uh, previous years. I think I've got oh. your 2017 album. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the title of it. I can't remember titles for most things, let alone. <laughs> I've got like 3,000 songs in my gallery. Um, oh my god. <laughs> I, the thing is, though, is that I found it this morning because apparently I've had it since it came out. Oh, oh nice. And have been listening to it since, so. A diehard that's fan. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Yay. It's <Yay. laughs> just like, oh, okay, I'm interviewing that person. Deep breath. <laughs> oh, oh. But yeah, it's it's been fantastic talking to you all, and honestly, I honestly the music is fantastic, the message is amazing, and the art style is oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> it, it gives me so much autistic joy. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> to to, to see neurodivergent joy. Yes, it's it's just oh, it's beautiful. And I, I just want to, I just want to thank you because it was actually um, your stent on Hollyoaks that made me go and get tested to see if I was intersex. And oh my God! That's no way. when I found out that I was intersex. So, thank you for that. I wow. appreciate your representation in the media. It has oh. been incredibly useful for me. Um, oh, that's made me tear up. Um, well, welcome, <laughs> welcome to the family, intersex siblings. <laughs> yeah, it's, I literally, I was going through so much and nobody understood why, and I thought I was just trans, and then I found out that I had half a male reproductive system, so that was fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you ever Absolutely need to fun. chat about it, you're quite welcome to pop into my DMs. I will <laughs> definitely do that at some point because you're fantastic. Oh, thank you. Um, no problem. And that's the interview. Make sure to check out Kindred. Make sure to follow Bamboo, Illa, and Kai on Instagram and Twitter. And have a lovely day. <laughs>